Best Ryzen 5600X gaming PC build. How to put together a gaming PC for around uh, $1,000 for the WQHD resolution. Guys, I'm gonna share with you today my personal gaming PC build, how I put together a gaming PC, how I select the parts, but first, today's video is sponsored by Lexar and the Tor DDR4 memory. Many gamers and professionals already use Lexar to work quickly and efficiently because Lexar has a large selection of innovative storage and memory products. Discover the benefits of Lexar in your next PC build or upgrade project, such as what I'm doing right now for my personal build. And I'm gonna walk you through how I select the parts, why I selected these parts, and we're starting with the case and the power supply. Guys, as you already noticed, 25%, that's what I allocated. Just to imagine a pie chart. We're gonna keep that pie chart in mind and I'm showing you my personal allocation. 25% is a little, little bit on the high side, but the fractal design, chalk white, I just couldn't resist. It's such an awesome design with the wood paneling on front. I really love this case. I'm a total sucker for this design stuff. And I also went on the Fractal website. Guys, I'm not sponsored by Fractal. This video is brought to you by Alexa. I also looked at their power supplies. Yes, I also compared other power supplies, but looking at it more in more detail, I settled for the 750 watt iron gold. Um, and guys, this seems to have a remarkably nice uh, build quality. I found it actually a little bit nicer than some of the other brands. So that's really nice. Uh, you can see here, that uh, if you have two options, basically, I picked the gold version for a thousand dollar build. That's uh, totally sufficient. If you were to build a bigger system, you might even get will go with the platinum. This has even bigger uh, capacitors. So really nice build quality here. And uh, what I want to remind you, though, is um, if you go power supply shopping, guys, you do it no me by no means you have to buy a fractal really do shop around but what i really recommend you is before you settle down on a particular model see what information the company supplies you with a good company will always give you plenty of information about the products that you want to purchase that makes it really easier for you to compare and uh, that's what i took at full advantage of by looking at the different efficiency curves and the different fan curves that come with these power supplies and i really found the 750 watt is a sweet spot it didn't cost in my case it didn't cost a lot more it cost about the same as the 650 and 550 watt model for the build that we are doing the wqhd build where you can play cyberpunk uh, on high settings and a wqhd resolution i picked components that are efficient and efficient cpu and i'm also going to show you an efficient graphics card so you're not going to use more than 300 watts this 750 watt uh, power supply is a little bit oversized but that's a good thing because you can keep that if you later upgrade to the am5 platform you can use that if you ever want to stick in a bigger graphics card that's more power hungry or an older graphics card. Some people, they tend to buy the older models uh, from the previous gen. They use a little bit more power. You have a lot of headroom there. For the main board and CPU, I also allocated around 25% and I also stuck with the AM4. In my opinion, it's not necessarily needed to go the AM5 route, although it would be nice to have when I looked, uh, CPUs, they were significantly more expensive and the boards were significantly more expensive. Although I have to admit, the prices do fluctuate, guys. This is approximately what I bought these parts uh, for. I'm in Europe, so I paid everything in Euro, but I converted it approximately to the dollar amount. My recommendation would be do not pay more than 150 for the Ryzen 5600X. Um, do not pay more than 150 for an AM4 board. I mean, there are other alternatives. You could pick an MSI, but I personally like to st stick with the ATX standard. So I don't want these smaller boards. And I also wanted a board that has a good VRMs. And you could look at the back of these boxes or when you shop online. Uh, this is a 12 plus two phase. It has a DR MOS. That's in my opinion, a very nice uh, power design. Now, the next thing that I allocated is about 10% for both the memory and the cooler. 
Guys, as I told you earlier, the Lexa provided me kindly with the DDR4 memory kit with very nice timings, the CL16 timings, and the company Coolio uh, provided me with a sample of their PT60 uh, dual fan RGB cooler. That's a little bit hard to get. Um, so the equivalent would be the Thermalright Perilous Assassin. Um, I have to have a quick disclaimer, since this Ryzen CPU is uh, very nicely power efficient, um, you could run it with the stock cooler. I mean, I know a lot of people, they just uh, try to save uh, the 30 bucks or whatever and use the stock cooler. If you decide to go the stock cooler route, my recommendation would be remove this uh, uh, thermal pad at the bottom here, because that's a little bit more thicker and maybe a little bit more sticky. So. From all I've heard, um, the worst thing that could potentially happen if you uh, use that pad, that over time it gets hardened or it gets very sticky. And then if you ever want to change out that stock fan, the AMD stock cooler, that uh, it might be very hard to remove. And in a worst case scenario, you, you pull out the CPU out of the socket while it's closed. So if you use the stock cooler, at least go a little bit extra mile and, and remove that and use some thermal paste just to be on the safe side. But uh, nonetheless, I would recommend you to look into maybe the thermal rights. You don't necessarily have to have a dual fan with uh, two of these cooling blocks. There are also the smaller ones that only have one fan. I went uh, with the RGB version, that's very nice. And storage. Also interesting, I still have the old Samsung 970 EVO, which I really want to try first in this build. It's a one terabyte drive. If you only play occasionally, if you have a small games library, one terabyte is enough. If you want to go a little bit bigger, you play more regularly, you have a big game library, I would opt for like something like two terabytes. And I seen the Lexa drive for about 139. So guys also watch for the prices. Approximately 10% is what I would budget for that. In that case, it would be a little bit over, but I'm still using the old one. And most importantly, the graphics card. Guys, I really have looked at a lot of graphics cards and graphics cards is, uh, uh, people have different opinions on it. I personally like the Nvidia. I've gone to like the Nvidia cards and especially the new for uh, RTX 460. It's a good entry level card. You can play Cyberpunk on high settings, no problem. And it's also a very energy efficient card. So, and that means it runs cooler. You can go with the normal dual model. I've seen it as low as two, uh, 299. And uh, in my case, because I am still using the old NVMe, I spent decided to spend a little bit more on the nicer Strix model that also has a three fan design, really nice cooling. In my opinion, a little bit, again, oversized, but that makes the whole system run quieter and very nice RGB effects, which is personally something I love about this Strix card. Very nice design from Asus right there. So overall, you can see we are roughly in the $1,000 range. Um, you have to check prices. Black Friday is coming up. Maybe you can even make some bargains. And then my main home, uh, the main point that I want to hammer home with you today, think of a pie chart, make yourself a list, and then do allocations based on your taste. In my case, I told you I used the fractal case and fractal power supply, so I'm a little bit overweight. Uh, in the case and power supply category, the board and CPU. There's the 5600X, there's the normal 5600 without the X that's running slightly slower. What I would stay away from is if you build a, if you Ryzen system, I wouldn't use the Ryzen CPUs that have a graphical unit in there, a 5600G or whatever that's called. Um, I don't like those the 5600 and the X are both okay. So up in the next video, I'm gonna put the whole system together. And then in video number three, we're gonna do a bunch of bench benchmarks. So if you wanna follow this build, hit that subscribe and I see you in the next video.